Hello everyone, my name is Ji Wan Lee. I'm a pianist and a teacher living in Los Angeles. Uh, today I'm working on Brahms' Opus 118 number no. 2, which is a beautiful piece I love. Um, and I thought I would invite you into my studio and show you a little bit of the process of my working on it. Um, if you are a student or you just want to uh, appreciate it on a deeper level, I think I might have a few ideas for you. So please keep watching and let me get to practicing. as an encore and this is what I would play as an encore if I were to do an all Brahms recital. Brahms wrote some very difficult and complex music throughout his life but I feel that this intermezzo like his famous lullaby is at the other end of the spectrum. Ideas are less fragmented and the melodies flow naturally. It is an ABA form so the whole A section is repeated almost exactly at the end. But because the melody itself is not repeated exactly the same way within each section, it might throw you off when playing it from memory. Early on in the learning process, try to pay attention to the harmony and memorize the exact differences in voicing as well as harmony. Has your teacher ever asked you to imitate singers? While the melodies here are pretty vocal, and it may be especially useful to think about how a singer might sing these phrases. For pianists, it is easy to play a leap of a seventh, but for a singer, it would take a lot of effort. And Brahms, knowing all this, writes a rolled tenth, and this should not be played too quickly. In fact, the whole melodic profile should not move too quickly. Imagine that your fingers are playing through honey. It would naturally take more effort for your fingers to go through honey than say water, right? I use flatter fingers rather than curved to play lyrical passages in the right hand. or any combination of the above, try to make the repetition feel slightly different. 
I would not do anything too drastic or too obvious, but I usually think about and plan how I might vary my expression in playing the same thing more than once. Here I am practicing voicing in this chorale-like F-sharp major section. The F-sharp minor melody that I just played is now presented in the major mode. Playing chords in legato and pianissimo are nearly impossible to do, so try to create that illusion on piano. I'm not doing so well here. Listen to different voices played at out of time Listen to the resonance that you're creating with different combinations of the voices. To support the forte in the melody played in the high register, you need a fairly strong bass in the left hand, and the imitation of the melody in the left hand should be heard. Brahms writes no crescendo, rather it is in dolce and the crescendo comes only at the end of that measure. You can create the most special moment when the dynamic moves the opposite direction from the melodic profile. an intimate piece, I think it is especially important to distinguish between piano and pianissimo. And where is it written dolce? Is it combined with ritardando or other expressive markings? Composer's markings definitely guide us, and exactly how you voice it and time it really will create personal moments that is a part of your own interpretation. 
So that was a bit from my practicing sessions and some ideas that may be useful for you in playing this piece. I would love to know what your challenges are in playing this piece. Ask away any questions and thank you so much for viewing this video. Mm -hmm.